I decided to visit this house in April 2024 as a midway stop between my mother's house and New Orleans. So that's like a nine, eight hour drive. And honestly, once in a while, not terrible. But I had been doing that drive quite a bit and I couldn't resist cutting that time in half <laughs> and uh, finding two nights to myself uh, in this amazing house. So I was in love with my room the moment I saw it. Uh, the hardwood floors, the antiques, uh, it was painted light blue and had amazing natural light. The bathroom, <sighs> clawfoot tub, uh, window, ceiling to floor, gorgeous. I really just wanted to spend all of my time in that bathroom. And yeah, I have gone to houses in New Orleans built around the same time, uh, staged the same way, and have paid $35 just to walk around it for like an hour. And now I got to actually like live in a house just like that. I was so amazed that I could touch things and uh, that everything was just so beautiful and well taken care of and fresh. The house, uh, the owner of the house, Pam, she actually bought the house and completely renovated it. She set the house back to its original floor plan. She painted the rooms all of their original colors and brought the house back to what it originally was. The home has a really deep spirit and something that was really interesting is I was actually raised in like historic Florida and there is very much an energy of like historic Florida that I can't really explain and it honestly wasn't even something I noticed until I was in that town in that house. There was a familiarness to the energy. I was like, oh, I know, I know this energy. I know this spirit. And it felt uh, very comforting in a familiar way because while I was really young when we lived in like an older part of Florida, a more historic part of Florida, um, during my life, we've moved around, moved around, moved around. Uh, but something about that kind of reminded me of being a child again, just running around kind of the beautiful landscapes of Florida, old Florida in particular, I guess. The room had a closet for your things, which I absolutely loved. There's plenty of storage, which I really like. I don't like for my luggage to kind of be out in the open. Um, of course, I'm not going to be picky about that sort of thing. But if I can put it somewhere, that's really nice. Uh, there was plenty of room for all of my odds and ends and my bathroom stuff. And like I said, I came to this house with the intention to pamper myself. So I brought a lot of little fun things, eye patches and face oils and uh, little trendy things off TikTok I've seen that looked fun. Like I really just wanted to enjoy that sort of relaxation pampering and that room had absolutely all the space I needed for all of my little odds and ends. So let's talk about some unique features of my stay. First off, the clawfoot tub. Gorgeous. Oh my god. It was everything. And I must have seen in the photos that there was going to be a clawfoot tub because I bought a bath bomb specifically for that tub and I was so excited to enjoy it. I will say I was really tired from walking around all day and I didn't know if I actually wanted to uh, do the bath, but I'm happy I did because they also had these beautiful robes that you could enjoy and relax in and it was a wonderful little touch. So let's talk about breakfast. Uh, what was really cool is being able to use like this really lovely china and I honestly felt like royalty the whole time. So let's talk about breakfast. Uh, Pam, the innkeeper, made a phenomenal breakfast. There was coffee, water, and juice every morning. And on breakfast one, we had this like whipped fruit parfait thing. And it tasted just like Dole Whip. I have been thinking about it ever since. And when I say that the bed and breakfast food was better than the food in the rest of the town, I really mean it. Uh, on morning one, we also had a Wisconsin cheddar omelet along with uh, homemade gluten-free bread and local satsuma jam, which was delicious. 
Uh, what's wild is I really like wanted to see if I could find some of this Satsuma jam and I honestly just should have asked Pam but I uh, had planned to go to the stores and look around and really couldn't find any but this would become kind of a theme which I'll share l during the wrap-up. Now morning two was the lovely fruit cup in the beautiful little china bowl. It was really sweet and there was also pecan french toast with real maple syrup and then sausage scrambled eggs absolutely delicious. You're not going to be hungry at all uh, for breakfast. It was really a nice experience and I really felt, again, like royalty, which I think we all deserve once in a while. You know, I came here to rest and relax. I came here to pamper myself. Uh, I came here to reset and I definitely got that experience. I very much felt taken care of. Sleep. So I kind of think I'm cursed. Uh, the last two bed and breakfasts I've stayed at, I have always ended up like next to the stairs or under the stairs. And with the John Denham house, I was in the room underneath the staircase. So anytime someone walked up or down, I would hear it. And the first night I was there, I guess there were guests above me and I could hear them walking around in the early a.m., like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and it did wake me up. That was a little unfortunate, but my next night I was the only guest in the house and had no trouble with that at all. Hospitality. I will say all of the caretakers of the bed and breakfast that I visit, the John Denham House and the Daffodil House, were really kind, especially the couple who runs the Daffodil House. They were very friendly, and I genuinely would go back just to spend another evening with them. They are very talkative, and they love to share stories. Uh, the wife, I actually purchased, uh, I guess she self-published a cookbook, and I bought it because her food was incredible, and I really wanted to support them. And I was unable to really find any souvenirs in town, so that was a perfect souvenir. Speaking of which, there is a winery in town, and you pass it on your way in, and I was really excited. I was like, oh gosh, I can get like a bottle of wine, enjoy it with my pampering, maybe take it home. It'll be a wonderful souvenir. Um, however, I went to the winery website and couldn't find any information about like how to visit or opening hours. And I did find a Travelocity page with some information, but based on the reviews, it didn't really feel like this was a place they really wanted you to go to. So I said, okay, I that's fine. Uh, but I was really hoping that some of the small shops or maybe local restaurants would carry the wine so I could buy a bottle. And I really found that wasn't the case. Whether the shops that carry it were closed when I was there or I didn't look well enough, Keep in mind, I'm only at these places for one day, right? So we have to, you know, consider that maybe my one day experience isn't the full story. Um, but I also found the restaurants really didn't serve that wine either because I was kind of looking forward to trying it, but couldn't find it. So I was really happy to at least buy that uh, self-published cookbook by the Daffodil House. That was really sweet. Um, a really sweet little souvenir. So I had planned a few things for myself. Um, I had really wanted to do a ghost tour, which the town uh, touted itself as like one of the most haunted small towns. And there was a ghost tour. And I was like, oh my gosh, ghost tours are my favorite. I'm a ghosty gal. I run a publishing company that is based off that sort of thing. And I was really excited to explore. Um, however, it wasn't available uh, either of the nights I was there. So that was pretty disappointing. Um, however, a nearby bed and breakfast called the Daffodil House uh, had something they called dinner and stories. And I was under the impression it was going to be like spooky stories. Um, so I planned that as well. And that was actually a really nice time. I got to meet the owners there and they were probably the friendliest people in town. And they made me a wonderful dinner of ravioli with I'm pretty sure it was like spinach and cheese stuffed with a butter sauce, as well as dessert. And I got to hear just some fun stories from the owners, and it was really a nice time. Um, another plan that had kind of fallen through was because I had dinner situated for that night with the bed and breakfast down the road, I checked out the restaurants and their menus. And the social restaurant had a great dinner menu. 
However, when I went there and got there, I found that they were closed. Womp womp. And that is something I kind of found in that town is things are closed at really odd times. So the social restaurant, I guess, was closed on Tuesdays. And a lot of the town, um, Wednesday was my walking around town day. And I also found a lot of the shops seemed closed. Uh, or That or like they weren't open. And when I say not open, I mean like there is no longer a store there sort of thing. Um, but I had a good time regardless. I did end up having dinner at Ref Cafe for dinner since the social restaurant was closed. Um, it was fine. Uh, however, I did find I was seated next to like these two women who seemed to do work in town. And uh, I got to overhear them just like talking trash and uh, planning uh, events. And that was delightful. Who doesn't love that small town kind of goss, you know? Overall, I found the town of Monticello to be very quaint and small, almost like it was a little bit stuck in time, which can be very alluring. And it was really hilly uh, and the houses were really old. And it really reminded me of the town, which is of uh, Eastwick from Witches of Eastwick, or it really reminded me of the town Eastwick from Witches of Eastwick. And hopefully I can insert something here that I can show that. Uh, and I will say I found all the food I had at the bed and breakfasts, both the John Denham house and the Daffodil Inn or the Daffodil house was like the best food in town and I really enjoyed the food there much more than the actual restaurants. Um, I didn't really enjoy the food from the actual restaurants but I highly loved the food from the bed and breakfast. I will say there was a little coffee shop called Cow House that I loved. It was really adorable. I felt like if I lived there I would probably go there like every day. Would I come back? Yes, I really enjoyed my time. I really enjoyed uh, the bed and breakfast uh, caretakers. They were really sweet and welcoming and considerate. Pam, the caretaker of the John Denham house, was really sweet. Um, I will say I found the rest of the town just like a touch less welcoming, not in like an aggressive or hostile way and not enough to like keep me from going out and enjoying the area, but it was a little noticeable, but like this is a small town and I am an outsider and you have to be cognizant of that. I would also stay in my same room. However, the other rooms were also really beautiful and gorgeous and I would not mind staying in those either. Uh, I would love to give all the rooms a shot, especially the blue room, because it's supposedly haunted, which we will get to. Is there anything I would change? I actually only had a single critique for the John Denham house, and that is simply, I think they would really benefit from having a professional photographer update the website. When you look at the website, the rooms can kind of come across as a little musty or dated or old, and that is not at all what my experience was. The rooms felt very clean, fresh, welcoming. And I don't feel like the website, I really don't feel as if the website captures how beautiful and welcoming this home is. And I definitely think it could use a little refresh. Also, I know I spoiled it a little bit, but is it haunted? And I have to go with, yes. Uh, there were times where I knew for a fact I was the only person there and I heard movement. And even though this isn't on the website, according to multiple books in the house, this is considered one of the most haunted houses in Florida. And I don't know if this is proof of anything, but when I was enjoying the clawfoot tub, I did find some scratches on my leg, which I thought was a little strange. Um, they looked like cat scratches, but I don't have a cat. I hadn't been around cats. I do have a dog, but I hadn't been around her in a little while, and her nails just aren't shaped like that. Um, I also hadn't really been around any brush, and I also tend to really, really cover up uh, not for modesty reasons, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just a goth and I like to be uh, wear black from like 
neck to foot. So I tend to be extremely uh, covered. I'm also kind of allergic to sun. So I do my best to keep my body just like covered up, my skin covered. And I had scratches. So I thought that was really interesting. And I don't know if that's proof of anything. I asked a few friends to get their opinion and we couldn't figure out like what that was. So there we go. Finally, I want to talk about something I actually really, really liked, which was the check-in process. Now, I actually think all bed and breakfasts should check people in this way. It was a contactless check-in. Uh, when you arrived, there would be a note on the door with all the information you needed, uh, how to get in, how to visit the Coppola, uh, the Wi-Fi, and little odds and ends, where to find a wine cork, where to find glasses, when breakfast would be served, just all the information you needed along with your key and you could just go in. And I really, really liked this because when you're traveling and maybe you've been driving for hours and hours and hours, you do kind of just want to get in once you're there. You want to maybe sit down, use the bathroom, just collapse. Uh, so it was really nice to just show up, go inside and relax. So I really love that. And I think actually all bed and breakfast should implement that. I thought it was absolutely the best idea. Disclaimer, uh, I am only in these towns for one day. I only sleep in these uh, bed and breakfasts for two nights. It is absolutely impossible for me to get a full view of these places and these accommodations. I try my best and give you my opinion based off my experience. However, I'm not going to claim that everything I say is how it is all the time. All I'm saying is that it was my experience. So there we go. children.